This chapter will provide you with a basic understanding of typical manoeuvring characteristics for different ship types. Today, the majority of ships are steered by autopilot most of the time. The performance of the various autopilots available varies a lot. Proper adjustment of all relevant autopilot parameters is most important in order to obtain optimal steering under various weather conditions. It is strongly recommended to use manual steering regularly in order to maintain good helmsman skill on board at all times. Lack of qualified helmsmen on board ships is a growing problem today. IMO Resolution A60115 defines the provision and display of manoeuvring information on board ships. The manoeuvring information should be presented as follows. Pilot card, wheelhouse poster, manoeuvring booklet. Study the diagrams to the right for an understanding of the different terms in use. When considering the turning circle, it must be remembered that the whole vessel does not follow the same path, but that the turn will centre about the pivot point, which lies about one-third of the vessel's length from the bow. The stern will swing wide on the turn, not crossing the initial path until the ship has moved at least two lengths forward, and then following a wider turning circle than the bow. The speed is greatly affected by turning. If space is available, turning is the most efficient way of stopping a ship. The turning circles are for a VLCC, full ahead, 35 degrees starboard rudder, deep water. Compare the curves for the loaded and ballast condition. Is the result what you expected? The loaded ship has more area of the hull under water and consequently the hydrodynamic forces that help turn the ship are greater. This diagram shows a crash-stop test for a VLCC. The ship's inertia is considerably larger when in a loaded condition. The stopping distance for a ship in loaded condition can be up to three times longer than when in ballast, depending upon the type of ship and the prevailing circumstances. This ferry, with two propellers, two rudders, and a lot of engine power, is easy to manoeuvre during good weather conditions. However, with strong crosswind, the situation changes dramatically because of the small draft, approximately 5 metres, and a large sail area of more than 4,000 square metres. As seen from the diagram, the speed of the vessel is greatly affected by a tight turn starting at high speed. The turning diameter is approximately three ships' lengths, while the crash stopping distance is less than 600 metres. This bulk carrier is in loaded condition, with a draft of 12 metres and a service speed of 15 knots. The ship is equipped with one propeller and one rudder. This ship is much less affected by strong wind than the ferry, on the other hand, the inertia of the ship is much larger and the power-to-weight ratio much smaller than the ferry. Crash-stopping this ship requires almost one nautical mile distance ahead and with the rudder amidships, the ship will, when stopped, end up almost on opposite course. The turning circle indicates a turning diameter of little more than three ships' lengths. The size of the VLCC in this example is 250,000 tonnes dead weight, with a length of 330 metres, draft 20 metres, and engine power 40,000 horsepower. Full speed is 16 knots. The space needed to turn the VLCC is much larger than for other ships. However, if we use ship's length as a reference, we will find that the turning diameter of the VLCC, like many other ships, is approximately three ships' lengths. Very impressive. If space is available, the quickest way to stop a VLCC 
is by turning the ship. The weight to power ratio for a VLCC is very low. It's not economically acceptable to power a VLCC in such a way that it can be stopped quickly. It has been calculated that the force required to stop a VLCC within half its unassisted stopping distance would put a large rocket into Earth orbit. When the water depth to draft ratio is less than 2.5, this will influence the manoeuvring characteristics of the ship. When the ratio becomes less than 1.5, the ship will need much more space to complete a turn. The rudder response time will also increase. The example on the right is from a 280,000 tons deadweight VLCC. Press play to see the animation. Ship manoeuvring characteristics can be determined from the results of defined standard manoeuvres. The manoeuvrability of a ship changes due to loading condition and sailing area topography. Squat is the reduction in under-keel clearance resulting from the ship sinking deeper in the water and the change of trim which occurs when a ship moves through shallow water. In shallow waters, water depth less than twice the draft, the water that normally passes under the ship is severely restricted. This results in two things. Firstly, the water passes under the hull at higher speed and will result in a low pressure and loss of buoyancy, reference Bernoulli's law. Secondly, the build-up of water ahead of the ship increases the longitudinal resistance and pushes the pivot point back. The most important factor influencing the squat effect is the ship's speed. The squat increases with a ratio of speed times two. Reducing the speed is the best way of reducing the squat. The block coefficient of the hull is also important. Squat varies directly with the block coefficient. In other words, oil tankers and oboes will have comparatively more squat than passenger liners and container ships. A zigzag test can give a lot of valuable information about a ship's manoeuvring characteristics. A zigzag test begins by applying a specified amount of rudder angle, 10, 20 degrees, to an initially straight approach, first execute. The rudder angle is then alternately shifted to either side after a specified deviation from the ship's original heading is reached. The important information obtained from these tests are the overshoot angles, initial turning time to second execute, and the time to check your. Stopping a ship in an emergency depends firstly on the mass and velocity and secondly on the engine power available. In narrow waters, the ship must be stopped with minimum deviation from the original course line. One very effective way to achieve this is to execute rudder cycling, also called fishtailing. Put the rudder hard over and hold it until a course deviation of 10 to 20 degrees is achieved. Thereafter, you put the rudder hard over to the opposite side and hold until the same course deviation is achieved. Continue with these turns and simultaneously decrease the engine RPM slowly before you reverse the engine. The emergency stopping distances shown here are approximates. However, they give a good idea about what to expect from different ship types. Mariners, like everybody else, should remember that emergencies happen when least expected. To be prepared for the unexpected is one of the many navigator duties. The only way to stay prepared is to regularly refresh proper procedures, manoeuvres and actions. No person, crew or organisation can be expected to cope with emergencies for which they have never been trained. 
When launching and recovering boats away at sea, great care has to be taken to complete launching without injury to the crew or damage to the boat. The ship herself will act as a breakwater against wind waves to ease the ship's own movement and the resulting movement of a boat suspended from davits. But very little can be done if heavy swell is present. More and more ships are engaged in helicopter operations. Pilots board by helicopter, ship spares are delivered, and crew are changed, etc. These operations require special attention to be carried out safely. From the ship handling point of view, the main objective is to give the helicopter pilot the best possible view of the deck area, which is marked out for helicopter operations. The helicopter's mode of operation is suited to flying into the apparent wind. The best attitude the ship can adopt is a steady course and speed with the wind at 30 degrees on the port bow. The helicopter pilot traditionally sits on the starboard side of his flight deck. His best view is of the ship's deck forward of him as he comes to hover.